subscribe our channel knowledge distributor for latest technology and smartphone videos 2018 ipad pro impressions video now this is the 12.9 inch version but they basically retain very similar specs just like the iphone 10s and 10s max do you can see this is the 256 gigabyte ipad pro and finally we have usb connection usb-c connection here for the ipad pro it doesn't include the pencil so i had to buy that separately this is 129 bucks so this is going to be quite the investment make sure that you're actually going to use this because if you don't then it's not going to be worthy of your investments that's even more than the first generation but it does magnetically connect to this ipad and that's a good thing because the old one it was very easy to get lazy and not want to charge that up but now when it's connected it just starts charging so taking the plastic off the box app always makes it super simple to go ahead and do that we're going to go ahead and open up the box and you can see there is the giant 12.9 edition however it got a lot thinner and, and just smaller overall footprint than the prior version now inside the box it's super clean just like any other ipad before it you have your warranty guide in here as well as a new guide to operate the face id on this device big apple stickers that come with this device and over here just some more we'll read that later when we're taking a number two over here you can see usb c to usb c so this should work with things like android phones as well i will test it out but that would be pretty cool if you got a pixel three or two and you want to take some great photos on that phone transfer it over your ipad pro and get editing and then we have our USB-C power brick. So I can confirm to you that the old iPad brick is 12 watt and the new one is 18 watt. So if you do have a USB-C to lightning cable, you can also charge your iPhone faster with this new brick as well. Okay, and for the Apple Pencil, the box looks very similar to an iPad box, just very small. Pretty much all the Apple boxes look the same. You have a pull tab here, and then you have this little insert with a bunch of papers you can read. And here is the Apple Pencil right here. I'm gonna take that plastic off. And you could see it does say pencil right here. No more, you know, taking that little cap off and things like that and charging, you know, sticking into the bottom horrible design that was. Now it's a much more pencil feeling pencil with this indentation right here. We'll compare it a little bit later, but I'm really liking the second generation Apple Pencil and I think artists are gonna come to love this one as well. Okay, so here's a Space Gray iPad Pro 12.9 and I could tell you off the gate automatically that the iPad Pro again with the Space Gray, it's a different color once again. It looks a lot more like the MacBook Pro Space Gray, which I do like. It feels more premium than the older color, but still again, not in line with what we're used to on the older iPad Space Gray. So this is the one I'm upgrading from, the Apple iPad Pro 10.5, which no longer works with the new Apple Pencil. That's pretty lame. But still, this is a fantastic tablet, and if you're looking for an iPad that's going to be a little bit cheaper but still very powerful, the 10.5 is still available, the older edition. But just look how different those grays are in comparison. But I definitely like the newer one much more. It's much more stealthy looking. Okay, so this new iPad does have Face ID, and setting it up is like any other iPhone that you've seen before. You're just going to go ahead and get started and position your face in there. And just go like so, and then do it one more time. And it's done. Just like that, you now have your Face ID set up. So that's all new for this new iPad. Okay, so here is the new iPad. I want to begin my impressions by giving my thoughts on the pricing. First of all, this is the number one thing I think people are thinking about with these new ones, how they increase the prices substantially. But really what you're paying for here is storage so the 11 inch starts at 7.99 the 12.9 starts at 9.99 and they go up significantly depending on your storage i think the sweet spot is going to be 256 gigabytes on the whole though i think that apple has priced the 12.9 out of consumer territory i think the 11 inch is going to be where most consumers go if they get a new ipad pro but those prosumer users those people that are budding professionals or are already professionals are probably definitely going to consider the higher storage options or the 12.9 inch display model one thing i don't like about these new ipad pros and it'll probably change on the next edition is that there's only two colors i like seeing more color options it's always nice to have more color options as not everybody wants a silver or space grayish color Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about in my impressions is the design, and that is that this device immediately made me think back to, if you've been messing with tech for a long time, you'll remember HP's touchpad, the WebOS days. 
this tablet had gestures and look at those bezels they're a lot thicker and bigger than this one but the overall front kind of looks very similar to that so that's immediately what i thought when i seen this ipad not to mention this is now all gesture based os here for this device now the design on the sides is more squared off so might make you remind you of something like this the iphone se look how similar that design is there and this is 5.9 millimeters thin so this thing is paper thin like it's like the thinnest ipad i've ever seen you got your magnetic connectors on the back if you want to get some of apple's accessories for this device you have a 12 megapixel camera up there then we have the magnetic connector right here so we can go ahead and place the pencil right there and it should appear on screen there is the pencil and you'll see that welcome to apple pencil to show you how to create an instant note you can do instant notes now on this ipad where you just double tap and take a quick note on the device now over here you can see that the power button is up at the top and so are the volume rockers off to the right now one thing that's kind of weird about this ipad is to power it off you can no longer just hold down the button that just activates siri you now have to put two fingers right here and hold them together and then you could power it off kind of an awkward movement to have to put two fingers like that to power it off but that's what it is here for the new ipad pros it's kind of similar to the iphone where you have to hold the power button and the volume down to go ahead and turn it off overall just much thinner bezels than ever before on older ipads and that makes it feel like a generational leap for the ipad which is huge for people that are considering upgrade you can actually justify this upgrade simply because of the design just look how much bigger these bezels are here than the new iPad. It's a really stunning design altogether. Okay, so quickly my impressions with the display. It's just a beautiful liquid retina display here, LCD technology, but I really couldn't even see that much of a difference between this and the iPhone XS Max when it comes to its overall quality. So you're really gonna be stunned by the quality of this panel. It just really takes up the whole front of it and you get really immersed into your content with this display. You have all these new beautiful artistic wallpapers here for the iPad Pro as well and that just really makes this display pop here for the device so this is going to be a fantastic viewing experience no matter what you're doing on a device even better than the macbook pros this comes up to 600 nits of brightness so that's fantastic brightness for this device so what are my impressions on software so we all know you have the new gesture system if you have an ipad and you update it to ios 12 you're already used to this you swipe down from the right to get to your control panel swipe from the top to get to your notifications tray you can go ahead and go like this to go through applications you can also slide on this bar at the bottom to switch applications and you can long hold to go into your you know multitasking tray right there also face id does work in any orientation now for the ipad Pro. This doesn't even work like this on iPhone. So you can have it in landscape and I'm covering the camera, but there it goes. You can go in even on landscape mode. I've tested it in the dark already and it works very well. It's going to have to get used to the new gesture based OS here, but it's pretty natural. It won't take you long. It's very easy to use. Okay. So one thing about software, a lot of journalists and people are saying in the media is that, oh, this iPad is just not going to work as well as a MacBook for you. How do they know your needs if you guys are open-minded enough to try things like luma fusion this is a very powerful video editing application for the ipad you can get similar work done that you're going to get done on even way more premium video editing applications so i already purchased it's like 20 bucks and you own it forever there's no subscription base you can change color science you could change the different frame rates you can also render in 4k 60 frames per second you could add text to your video luma fusion is a very powerful editor also adobe just brought adobe rush for ten dollars a month you can now have an imovie competitor that gives you much more fine-tuned control than imovie including adding titles to your video and placing them where you want on the screen final cut is not here although that would be nice if apple did bring final cut even iMovie you can get a ton of work done you can run a whole youtube channel just on iMovie if your videos are not going to be too complex you don't need final cut pro to get your youtube channel going at the end of the day i think that many professionals can benefit from this you even have affinity photo which is a huge photoshop competitor and it's a beautiful application. You can get so much work in here done, and Photoshop is gonna be coming to here soon as well. So there's plenty of professional grade applications for the iPad. I think you should get the Apple Pencil if you are gonna be doing professional work on here. Not to mention, bringing the all new USB-C port to this device allows you to connect things like you know little adapters like this. You can stick in here and you can see it lights up right there. I can go ahead and stick 
a SD card in here like so, and it will read my files very easily. Also, you'll be able to run this iPad to a monitor from the USB-C port, which will make it much larger so you can get even more work done. I think where it's mostly limited at is things like Final Cut Pro, Adobe Premiere Pro, and just some applications that definitely re require desktop. But it's getting close, it really is. So in terms of performance, need I say more? Look at these Geekbench scores, 17,000 on the multi-core, 5,012 on a single core. My 15 inch MacBook Pro from 2015 is not even this powerful as the new iPad Pro 12.9. So this thing is an absolute monster in performance. Four gigabytes of RAM, A12X CPU, it's blowing away most laptops on the market right now. Okay, so here's another benefit of the new iPad Pro, the battery life. Because it runs the mobile operating system, it lasts much longer than a MacBook Pro will. I was already testing this yesterday. I did three hours of use and it only dropped 20% in three hours. So fantastic battery life you're gonna get on this new iPad. Okay, so let's talk about the speakers. We are on the Nick Ackerman YouTube channel and we're gonna play a video really quickly here and see how they sound. Now, the old ones were already very good, so I expect these to be no different. So, what is up, guys? Nick here, helping you to master your technology. Should you buy iPhone 10 or should you buy iPhone 10R? Many people have been commenting, asking me this question ever since. So they seem very full and very loud, but they don't seem like they're like a mind blowing upgrade. They just seem like they're very good. And one more thing about audio, you have no more headphone jack on this device, which is I don't think a big deal as by now, if you're willing to buy a tablet at over a thousand dollars, you more than likely have Bluetooth headphones. Now, the iPad Pro 12.9 has this new feature with the Apple Pencil called Instant Note. And basically it allows you to go ahead and start making drawings or whatever you want to do really quickly without actually having to unlock the tablet which can be pretty useful if you're taking a lot of notes and i'm going to go ahead and quickly just draw a tennis racket i don't know feel like playing tennis maybe and um not the best tennis racket in the world so one thing i want to mention about this apple pencil is that it's much more like a real pencil now the accuracy feels very close whereas before it was a little more fluid feeling this just feels very close to an actual pencil. So in conclusion, this is the iPhone 10R, the iPhone 10, the iPhone 10s Max of the tablet world. Well, no OLED screen, so you can say it's got the 10R display. No notch on here though, which is really nice, but if you have one of the newer iPhones, you're going to feel right at home on this new iPad. If you never had one of the newer iPhones or you're just an iPad user in general, this is the best time ever to upgrade. This is the biggest leap forward since the original iPad and it's definitely felt from the minute you pull it out of the box. This feels like an all new product more than any other iPad that came before it since the first, very first iPad that was initially released way back. So overall you can see I'm pretty positive about this tablet and if you're in the Apple ecosystem and you really wanted an iPad for a very long time, this is the best time ever to purchase. Just make sure that you get the model with the right storage for you. That's it for my first impressions. I'm pretty much stunned with it and it's not because it's an Apple tablet. Any company would have made a tablet that looks like this I would have been like amazing design good work there's a couple downsides like some of the applications are not updated yet third party for this so you're going to see little black bars very slight black bars bezels the bezels can be slimmed down for the future as this is the first kind of all screen ipad we're still going to see it come down even further i think in the future we're not there yet this is a great leap forward for the ipad if you guys have any questions comments concerns suggestions